This is Go Veer, Go Home. I want to welcome you guys back to another kind of a layout update. Also, wanting to talking about uh, some wiring, track, and uh, roadbed. So, uh, we'll take a look first to see what exactly I've done. So, we're still in the main yard here. Well, somewhat. Uh, basically, I've got my entire back section basically laid out and uh, it's all attached. I've got wire going to it and I've got uh, a lot of switches down with all the little ground throws. And then we move to the uh, the actual the main line here where there's it's a four four track main. Uh, well technically three with a uh, passing siding but uh, just kind of it almost looks like it's four main line just from where I am anyways so um, basically what I want to talk about first off would be the cork road bed so I went with cork there's a couple of different things that you can use either the cork uh, you can go right onto the foam uh, a lot of people will go right onto the uh, the wood ply top and there's also um, I don't know if I mentioned it but there's foam uh, now, there's nothing wrong with using any of them. Uh, everybody has their own personal preference. I'm old school, so I prefer the, uh, the cork. Uh, basically, it's really easy to put down. Um, I use the No More Nails in the, in the caulking gun. There you go. That's what it looks like. No More Nails. So, once I figure out where the center line is, there's two strips here, so I make sure there's a center line, which would be the center of the track, and I put a strip of glue down, and then basically I use uh, this here to kind of spread it out, and then I tack that down with, uh, these are sewing, uh, sewing needles. Uh, there's actually there's two packs in here uh, for one pack there there was quite a few but I'm like ah, I could definitely go for you know more because obviously if you're doing a large section you want to have you know lots right so that's basically it right there uh, I think it was like three bucks and it was 50 so I've about 50 I believe and so there's like a hundred in here um, you can get those at basically like Walmart or something like that. Um, a sewing store possibly. It's just a cheap alternative. And you know if you break any, you'll lose it. It's not a big deal. Unless you step on it. Then that's a big deal. So I got uh, a little container here which they all fit. I also use other containers for things like track nails. Um, I got a pack of track nails, put it in here, and uh, I know where they are every single time. So now I glue down the uh, the cork, but I nail down whoop, I nail down the track. Uh, I don't know why. I just do. That's the way I've always done it, and that's it's always worked for me. But everybody has their own thing. Uh, also have another kind of pack here when uh, it comes to doing track work. I've got all my joiners. I you'd like to use the uh, the silver ones that which would be for Atlas track. They come in a, a strip of four, but they usually you get about like uh, six or seven of these in one pack and it's like five bucks. And then there's also the uh, the clear ones here which have a little spacer in them. It's good for isolating tracks so that uh, you can basically, well I'll show you. So if you look over here, you'll notice that I've got the clear spacers in there. That's because I want to have separate power going to those tracks there, but these ones will have consistent power to them. So basically moving along here you'll notice that I've got a number of switches already already down. Well, because I'm planning on using the tortoise switch machines, 
I don't know if I can do this with enough light, but uh, basically there's a hole. I drilled three holes, one, two, and three. And you go right through and you just have to clear it in out, uh, out enough so that when you're putting in your switch machine, there's a wire that comes up through from the underneath underside and it's just going to go through that little hole and it'll be able to move your switch left and right and you need enough clearance on the in, inside here like on, on the underside for it to uh, you know they call it the wiggle room you know for it to move back and forth so that these are all set these are all ready to go with a little hole underneath right now they're just free moving uh, i need another ground throw for here but uh, so all the holes are drilled for all of those. I believe there's six in total. Uh, and yeah, so basically uh, you'll notice here, and some of you might be asking, why is this higher than all this? Like why did I, you know, how, what's the point of that? Well, the main line is normally a lot higher than the sidings. So basically anywhere where I have main line, uh, I do raise it up a bit. Yes, even this one here. Uh, it is a little bit, you'll see it's a little bit further away from these ones, but that's okay, because it's, uh, it's a more of a siding anyways. Uh, and then how do I make the transition from a main line to a siding? Well, you're gonna see uh, what looks like a piece of wood under the track. And I did it for there, and I did it for in there. And what I use is actually a shim. Uh, they make great kindle for, you know, burning, getting a fire going and whatnot, because it's a, it's a thin piece of wood. And it comes in a huge pack so that, uh, you know, you buy a huge pack and you just burn it off, it gets a good fire going and whatnot. And uh, also a lot of people who are in construction will use it when bracing doors. Um, when you put in a door frame, or a window if you need to raise up the window or well, uh, it's hard to explain but if you're in construction or you've ever built things like a you know a frame for like a window you definitely know what i'm talking about so i basically cut the shim so it's the same height as the cork and then i have it on the underside of the track obviously and i've nailed it down put a bit of glue and then I have done a bit of the um, the cork going like just down the side uh, to make it you know, spread out a little bit and then going across I've got my ground throw right and that works and that's all level so that's basically how you're coming off the main line and then it goes down and you're flat with the uh, with the ground there the pink foam so that's something that uh, I can definitely recommend doing it does work um, I've ran the uh, the cars over that several times it's it's a very mellow transition if you have something like uh, the Walther's passenger cars they've got a you know a fair amount of detail on the other side and they do, do hang quite low um, you might, might want to consider not doing it because it might scrape a little bit, but most other locomotives and cars, box cars and all that, uh, they'll go over that just fine. Uh, next, you know, I'm saying a lot, I've gotten a lot in so far, but um, it's, you know, it's all valuable information. Uh, so basically, as per my... Um, I guess my, like what I need for my layout, uh, a programming track. So basically I have it capped here and I have it capped here. And then I've got the, uh, the wires attached here and the, they go under. Uh, I've got a bunch of switches coming uh, that I've ordered from, uh, I guess, Hong Kong, I believe. And one of them will be a, an on, off, on switch where basically when it's on it'll be set for programming when it's off it doesn't do anything and when it's on the other on it means i'll be able to use that just like a normal track like everything else so there'll be a programming running and then a, just an off so i can have a locomotive sit there turn off the track 
and it won't make a sound. And that's the same reason why with uh, tracks like this here, I have it isolated so that I can have trains in here or maybe in the back uh, or even back in there. Uh, basically, I can put a train in there, just leave it, and it won't make a sound because there won't be any any power going to it. I've also been working on my diesel fueling facility. You can see I did some weathering to it. Uh, it still has a bit more work to go, but it's uh, it looks like it's set up in place there, and I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Got the track running in there, and the trains can run in and get fueled up and for the day, and then and then leave. And of course, I've got all three tracks separated, and there's three different powers going to each one, so I can have the cars in there, and they won't make a sound. So, some of the things that I use when doing most of this. Very basic stuff. I get a, a three pack of wire. It doesn't cost me much because I get them at the source and I get a discount there. Um, I think it's a 22 gauge wire and it comes with all three colors. It's like a roll like this. I'm not sure how, how much footage is here, but uh, I use the green and the black for the uh, left and the right rail. And then I've got a bunch of red. Uh, I don't really use the red all that much, but I, I really should. But I might use it for smaller sections. I know I I replaced the green uh, for the programming track. I replaced the green with the red just so I'd know when I'm underneath the table uh, that that's my programming. Uh, I also have a lot of these barrier strips. Basically, with the old layout, I was using these. They're very expensive. Well, for what you're getting and for how many you would need. Um, basically with the barrier strip or with the way it works. If you attach a wire here, that will flow through to this one and then you have a wire going out this way. So what I do, I jump the barrier walls. I do four, uh, so I can have, uh, this side is my left rail and these four here as my right rail. Now, this is the kind of setup I use for my main line. So, when I drop my wires, my feeders, through here, and there's going to be another one here, uh, they go through the table, and then they connect with the left on one side and the right on the other, and then they're all attached. Then I'll have two wires, one from the green and one from the black, running from this end all the way over to this end, or about where that car is there where there's more feeders dropping through with another one of these and it would attach to the same colors. So basically that would be my main bus and this is going to be my main bus wire where it, you know it connects right through and it's going to go all the way around and yada yada yada. <laughs> so basically that's what I use for my main. Uh, these ones are a lot heavier and uh, I just find that they're better. Uh, they come in both the 8 and the 4. Uh, I've got mostly the 8, but I've got a couple of 4s that I can also use just in case. I also ordered a bunch of these from Hong Kong. Uh, they're already all here. Or I actually had them before I even moved. Uh, you can cut them. Uh, I have a bunch that are uh, twos, and I have some that are a little bit bigger, and I've got the 4s. And basically, I use them for the feeder sections. Now, uh, this is a very shitty, excuse my French, uh, diagram of how it is. <laughs> so imagine this black strip here as the main bus wire, okay? And this here is the diagram of the track layout, which is going to be this. So I have little my little toggle switches on here, which they're not there yet, obviously. But uh, and the, oh, and this is not permanent, by the way. This is just my mock-up. Uh, I'm gonna do a lot better of a job of when it comes to my uh, switch thing. I don't know what you call it. Uh, track board, 
yeah. No. But uh, basically, my controller, which is this here, uh, I'm sending the power from that to the f the uh, the main bus line, and it's going to travel all the way around the layout. From there, I have the track, which is, uh, I guess, the main line or whatever. Uh, so if that's the main line, I've got the wires going to it, right? Just off the feeders, there's one there, there's one at this end. They usually suggest to do, uh, if you've got a modular layout, do drop a feeder at each end. And then when you connect it, you've got two connections, one at each end of your uh, module. Uh, kind of like what I have here. If this huge table here was a module, I have power there, and I have power there. So, next, after dropping the the power from the track to the, the main, uh, you've got also your siding here. Now this is just like those. Okay, and this rail is not actually attached to this, this main line. Okay, so there's like a, a block there, a wall. So consider this to be dead. So there's going to be switches on here. So the wires are going to go and they're going to run out of the table and they're going to go into the back of this board. And then it's going to connect to a switch. But how do these get the power? Well, you just run a power from the main line to... The switches. Um, you probably have to have some elaborate, you know, things set up on the back here. I'll probably figure it out and I'll show you a better picture of when it's actually done. But basically power from the main to the back of the switches and then you run from the switches to the side track. So when I flick a switch it sends a power and then this is a live track. So you'll be able to drive in, flick the switch, it powers off, and then you're still using the main line for whatever else. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, I'm pretty sure I'm making it sound a lot easier than what it actually is, because I'm sure, you know, there's different ways that you can do this, but I mean, this is the way I have understood it, uh, so this is the way I'm going to do it. Um, there's a couple of other things that we can go over. Also, you've got a lot of loose hanging wires underneath the, the layout. So I got a pack of these, they're like little C clamps where basically uh, there's a nail and it holds the wire up, you just gotta nail it up. And also you need some screws. I've got these very tiny ones here, uh, 17 pieces, wood metal screw, 4x1, uh, and basically it fits into the little hole in the center there and it just basically you nail it to the, the bottom of the layout. And I'll kind of show you all these here. So you can kind of see how the wires come through and they attach. And then I've got one of the, the plastic ones up there. This is the entire yard. So those are four, sorry, three tracks. And those three tracks will run, the power to those will run all the way up here to the back of this. For these three tracks and there's going to be three switches here and then when I flick the switch each one is going to either light up uh, I'll decide what color I'm going to do for those but basically they're going to light up and it's going to show that there's power and then I'll be able to move the train in and out of these spots fun right and all I'm using is basically uh, it's about a, a foot long feeder cable that I attach on the underside of the uh, of the rail here. And you'll see where I have it. I just remove some ties, put a little bit of solder on there, and then I just attach this to the underside of the rail. A lot of people do it on the side, like right like that, but I don't want to see it at all. So. All I do, it's on the underside, I solder it, feed it through, and then I just use some of that No More Nails just to uh, fill in that hole. But that's basically it. So, besides that, yeah, that's all the work I've gotten done so far. And there's already power going to it. So, we're just going to take a look.
Well, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> didn't really run the train very far, but it basically it runs from that end of the layout to the other end of the, well, you know, that layout. But it, it doesn't go all the way around yet. Uh, I've still got a few more tracks to lay here, and then I'm not sure if I'm going to go up this way and start in this section, or I'm going to go into the train terminal. It would probably be more beneficial to go this way into the train station and whatnot and work that way um, just because uh, there's going to be a, a lot that I have to do over here and I'd rather get the main line going this way and go back there and work on all that stuff and kind of move it out of the way but yeah but anyways uh, you know thanks for coming by uh, to all my new subscribers if you want to see more stuff like this, uh, you know, give it a like. Stay tuned for more, and uh, we'll see you. We'll see you soon. But uh, I do have a train to catch, so uh, until next time, I'm Gobier. Go home. Have a good one.